Hi guys, it's EGC here. So today I'm here with another uh, Descended Deck profile and this time I'll be covering uh, Gandiva with uh, cards updated from DBD12. Uh, I <coughs> actually did record another version already but then today which is the 24th of September that we actually know from the JP side that we have restrictions on uh, card like Sturgna that is becoming one so uh, instead of showing you that version which I have to say the changes is very minimal but then it won't be uh, actually as a valid that list anyway in like a few days because my plan is to show you guys on 26 which is a Tuesday uh, and then the new block list or new restriction list actually start valid on the 29th so it's only like three to four days valid and then it become invalid and then need to make a description and whatever i think that is just not good for people who are looking at so i'm redoing this again uh, with a little bit changes and that's basically all needed uh, so let's also talk about how gandiva changed with uh, the new set dropping BD12 and of course we are also getting DVD 13 on the same week as the video release uh, which I don't think it will change too much but yeah if it really changed then I will do another version too uh, yeah so Gandiva we have it as a meta deck for a very long time few sets and then we also consider it on the JP side a cheaper options if you want to be competitive because a lot of cards in Gandiva are cheap uh, for Yen side I think because players or people who crack the cases boxes knows that this is a very good deck so the prices is going up and the, like the supply may not be that much to actually make it to drop so it's always high uh, compared to some other lower budget decks right uh, but then in JP is a very cheap option if you're going competitive compared to like Willista which you also get restricted uh, if you are actually going to build that deck just the uh, personalized support is already causing you a lot uh, and then the gem order or the jewel order whatever it is is also be quite expensive in JP so uh, you can see like if we can make a choice when we are going in uh, without having any cards then you will choose Gandiva over a lot of different uh, kind of meta decks because even like Bastion Prime with the new Bastion Accord you also need the magazine promo which have increased by so much so that's already another gap but for Gandiva it's really cheap option for a lot of people um, and that's why it's popular it's good it's cheap it's easy to get the stuff and you don't need to look back too much to find the old stuff so it's easier easily accessible affordable in a JP environment so it always stays there and actually with the new support we don't have a lot of changes to be honest uh, which you will see when I go through the deck list right now so uh, right one I've changed from using the buff saga right line to a full uh, Gandiva right line now uh, I did make a different stages of changes to this first is of course my uh, buff saga right line so that I can get uh, one of the equipment when I ride my great one and then I discard it, go into grade 2 and pick it back up and discard it again, go to Gandiva. Uh, which kind of, one, squeeze my deck, and two, to make uh, myself losing less resources just by going through the right line, right? Because I just need a soul bluff one, grab the equipment from the deck, it's already something free, and then I just ditch it two times, right? Uh, but then, uh, also like looking through a lot of different players playing during uh, WGV Deluxe in Hong Kong that lots more people going for the Great 2 
because the credit queue, as long as you ride uh, Gandiva on top of it, you can at least for the time you ride on it, have one color blast cost reduced for using your Gandiva effects, uh, which is quite important to start your engine. Unless your opponents like it, like even when your opponents don't play anything, you can still activate this effect and bind one a drawing card, right? Which it doesn't hurt you at all, right? And you you, you can do it for free. So uh, that's why the grade two actually getting more and more uh, usage and more people considering to actually use him because of that. So I gone through that and. I was using the Basagra Grade 1 and Grade 0 too, so that I can uh, grab the equipment to at least ditch it for once, right? And also squeezing my deck. But then, uh, I actually prefer to have a little bit more souls, uh, which also because I think uh, Stragna is quite important, even though it got limited to 1 right now. Um, but I think that is still important. So uh, I am still going to keep this front line without thinking too much uh, because even if I have one less soul, it won't change too much. But then uh, I can at least make my opponent trying to play more stuff. Then because they are trying to dodge me to ride into my grade 2 for free, they will play a lot more stuff. That means I have more target to actually target. Of course, at the same time, I will need to uh, survive from more kind of early rush. And if my opponent is using decks that don't always bring out cards early game, then I get to uh, ride into my creative for free, right? Which is, I think, is quite good. And also with the second skill. Uh, if my opponents have a lot of regards, then I can actually call this card out. So uh, that even though my soul will still be gone, like this will come out, but then I will still get a chance to do some early rushing, which this deck is usually a little lacking because some cards you don't want to play them uh, before you get to Gandiva, or else they will just be vanilla. And for Grace Zero, I'm using this um, to start making people think I'm not using the buff chakra right now. Uh, so that I can play a little bit mind games with them. But if you want to uh, also try to play a little bit mind games with them, you can still use the buff cycle race zero. But then I think whenever you review a great one, the tactics is already seen. So uh, to me, I think that's fine. But if you prefer to use a different grace zero to uh, kind of making your opponents think a little bit more, I think that's also a room that you can do because other grace zero basically do the same thing. Uh, yeah so here is our right line and let's go into our main deck so first uh, I'm running four of the best harvest so this is basically your draw resources um, and I was running three and then I pop it to four uh, because I do have a lot of times that I actually don't see the order at all even when it's free So I increase it to 4 and if I have actually too much I can just digit for right cost, I don't care um, But having the extra draw power is quite important for your survival because uh, By having this ready Meaning you can always play a card, pop a card, get a card back, right? and your hand size will not simply drop and that is important for survival because even if you are healing for high power if your opponents can just fully take every single hit you have and then swing you back with full forces you might not be able to survive if you don't have a big hand size uh, especially with the rule change we are like limited to our strength and we will require the help of the new card to actually help us out which I will talk about in a bit and the reason why this is more important uh, in the reason uh, area or so the actual like reason updated environment that we're in free more Gandiva because we want the present right we want uh, extra soul if we need it 
and extra tank in the front row is great, drawing card is great, just that. Uh, also, is another uh, great free that you can rely on with your Ganyva skill to accurate reveal, so it's important. And let's put the stack now here, uh, stack now here. Uh, it's limited to one, so I'm putting it to one. Before that, I was running at two, and I think three is max, which I will probably cut one of this to that. Uh, the good thing about Sturgna is that it doesn't kill your hand, and it's like on place, which so plus you want to bind another card, so you can just use another thing to attack and bind that card, so you don't need to worry about it too much. Uh, and it's easy combo piece with a decent base attack as a 13k base so he's always a very good card that you don't want to cut too much you also don't want to play too much because it's a great free that means you are uh, limited to what you can reveal and it has no shield value right and now it's cut to one so we are just putting one and the new card here which is our uh, Bravo then so he is the new support um, which is helping the deck quite a lot but also in the current situation is creating a little bit of weak point to the deck so let's talk about his skill first is a continuous deck skill while this card is revealed by the ability of your vanguard with Gandiva in his card name this card is also regarded as grade 1 and 2 so if you're Gandiva, reveal this card, you can pop grade 1, you can pop grade 2, you can pop grade 3. Uh, you can pop grade 0, but I think that's doing good enough. Uh, and this is the reason why you can actually run a little bit more uh, high grade units and not to worry about the ratio on your grades in your deck because this counts as 3 grades. And as long as you reveal this and you put in a lot of this, that means you have a lot of chance to actually pop a lot of stuff as long as they have so much right uh, and the second skill when this card attacks a vanguard if you have a uh, vanguard with Gandiva his card name you can bind a card from your hand face down choose one of your opponent's free cards and retire it and if you can't retire a card you can draw a card back and this unit will get uh, 5k until the end of the battle uh, so this why is creating a weak point because if we uh, don't have best harvest our main phase retire won't get this card and we, we need to keep playing cards down and assuming we are popping cards right because if your opponents play a lot of cards you still need to pop them so you can just keep binding cards and this is very important for the deck and this is also eating a card from your hand even though it increases your bind zone which is a very good thing because if your opponents have nothing and a lot of your cards like kind of re uh, rely on popping stuff even though if you can't pop you can still buy something from a drop zone but what if you don't have a drop zone so this allows you to uh, buy a card from your hand which is something that you have usually into increasing your bind zones which again is very important for your overall power for your candy fighter gain credit but then you are reducing your hand size which means you don't have a lot of defending power uh, or sometimes you even need to make choices hard choices on what combo piece you actually need to bind the face down in order to get the five so uh, this I think creates a little weak point before we have a lot of stuff to uh, kind of cover it up uh, while not trying to burn your hand and then you just keep a good hand size or slightly decent but now you're probably going to reduce and you don't always use the second skill to pop something or uh, like when you see opponents have nothing on the board then you can mine one and then exchange for another card which I think is good uh, but your hand size won't change so it is a good card it's a good support especially for the first skill but I think the second skill is something that you don't spam and you need to be very careful on the timing to actually use it so that you uh, don't run out of cards to protect yourself 
and that creates the gap or the hole for your opponents to just go in and just finish it off. That's important. And because his second skill is a during battle uh, phase skill, so your best harvest won't be able to get you another card, so do be careful about that as well. Okay. And then of course, we still have a 4, uh, Evercock. So it's our multiple attacker. Um, that's just basically what matters. Creating more attacks for you so that you can uh, go in with high power for more times and that's how you win games because free attacks is not going to save you with the stack uh, so yeah it's basically that and then uh, Rukwant is a good on place uh, a sudden pop so it helps you a lot and have a chance to exchange you another card if your opponents have nothing on the field um, so He's still here, still helping you out to do the job. And then Brachial Force uh, is something that allows you to play early game because like this, this, this and this requires uh, you to have a game developer and for these ones, even if they don't care about game developer name, they're pretty free so you can play them early game. Uh, and these ones, you, this you might actually play it early game uh, to bait your opponents to attack it or like get rid of it but uh, you do prefer options that you can simply uh, play early game to apply the pressure and when you go into Gandiva you can try to gain crit as quick as possible and keep stacking the power and crit for the pressure so that you can win the games and Black Hill Force is something that can actually help you to do, to do that and it can turn into another card and pop another regard if it hits so uh, it's quite important and it didn't require you to hit the vanguard so you can also hit some annoying regards to force your opponents to drop cards to guard and then you can even go in right when they have less defensive so this is a very good card to still consider using uh, unless we have some other kind of amazing options coming from the next few sets he's probably still be here and then uh, free Bowser because uh, you can see here this 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 are using my counter blast and I always prefer to have plans in case I keep taking damages while I don't heal a single time it happens and as long as that happens I only have five counter blast and that's not enough so I always prepare myself uh, some counter charge options if I can uh, which this card is a very good one to do um, and you just need your buying zone to have three cards or more which is usually quite easy to get over with uh, so you do this for at least one card right like less like it's the worst situation when your opponent has nothing on the field this binds one uh, if your opponent is on grave read, this will bind one, and you can make this to bind one, right? So, um, like, worst of the worst, you can just by using these three skills and then get this to go away uh, and counter charge you. So, uh, it's quite easy to achieve already with your usual cases, and even like these ones, you can still like binding cards already, so it's quite easy to get the free and i do see some people actually dropping it uh, with especially with this coming to play uh, but i think the counter charge is important and sometimes i just don't see it so i still prefer to have some other great ones because my remaining great ones are basically my pgs so uh, i want to have a good balance still uh, even though we uh, have a choice to actually run in more higher grade cards which I actually do still uh, and because of this allows me to actually play more in this uh, play a bit more in grade 2's and actually take out some great ones uh, but I think the color charge is important here still and then with the PG's I'm using just pure PG's for uh, reasons like I 
actually quite kind of relying on the single card PG moment because this order is great uh, even when we are starting to see more uh, Jet coming in and probably later uh, Shinanri and uh, also Luar coming into play they will be great force if they really become a big threat then probably you will change one back to the this order but for now uh, most of your opponent's grades are free so they won't be that easy to actually get the triple drive so you can't simply just use one card to PG with the Blizzard Order it's a good thing to dodge some hand restrictions effects but there isn't that much right now as far as I concern so uh, I think the single card PG moment is more uh, important especially when I'm saying our hand size is actually kind of decreasing and we are not getting that much of a hand size if we don't get a good best harvest turn and this is also killing your hand so uh, if you can just use one PG to guard for two times when you have two card, two PGs in your hand put one out single card PG put another one single card PG that sometimes just saves you and if you have the Blitz Order PG and this and you need to survive two attacks which means you cannot because if you throw one out the Blitz Order can't be used if you use the Blitz Order you need to discard a card so uh, I prefer to have this two in my hand to 1-1 one, one PG two times get it over with survive the turn uh, other than using the Blitz Order but if you prefer to use the Blitz Order, you can do it. Uh, not stopping you at all. But I would just, if you ask me uh, with this deck what I think is better, then I will think four uh, unit PGs will be better. Uh, and then let's go into triggers Dragon Empire, OT, because we're standing Vanguard with crit is great. And then. For sowing crit, which if you don't have the sowing crit and think it's too expensive, you can just use the normal one. Uh, with Sturkna turning to one, uh, there isn't too much chances that you will just put this card into your soul at all. You will just use it for guarding. So normal uh, crit will do the work as well. And then formal crits, uh, three of the effect draws, and four normal heals. Uh, I value the 50 gear shields a lot more to just get a better average on guarding uh, but if you want to turn one into effect triggers you can but I think the normal 15k uh, heals is just doing enough work you are not playing a very very long game unless you are forced to because uh, you are trying to stack the power higher and higher and higher and you need to keep applying the pressure right uh, because if not you will be drawing a lot of cards and you might be the person who deck out first uh, so yeah i'm not planning for a very long game and i try to win as fast as i can so more crits than uh, having a four draw ratio to seven crits uh, so I just need some base defense, make sure I survive. But the draws, since I'm using draw, uh, I want a better defensive draw. So I'm using the effect draws for 10k defense. And sometimes that really matters. So uh, this is something that you probably can't dodge. But if you really can't find one, then you just use some normal draws. It will make a difference. It will. But then uh, if you are really looking for low budget or you really can't find any of these uh, and or you just can't pay for these and just like can I use the normal draw you can you always can uh, yeah so it's not that important that we felt it would kill the whole deck so if you are using basic familiar triggers with this ratio you can uh, but the OT I would suggest you to get the Dragon Empire one to but not use the uh, simple elemental one with uh, two times a hundred million unless you really don't have a choice 
because withstanding is really helping you a lot, given that you can actually pull it off, right? Yeah, so uh, that's basically the decklist. And the changes I made to like previous versions is that I put this in. Uh, this becomes one because of the restrictions. Uh, actually, adding the brachial force in, take out the dragon to wretch thing because uh, I don't have that much great one to call anymore uh, change on the right line but most are basically the same content so you don't need to change too much with this deck uh, some people use like the uh, personalized support as well because it's wipe a whole uh, column uh, yeah that's probably about it and some people was using this I was using it as well uh, but then when I start cutting more and more and more well I don't have a lot of color blocks right uh, then I'm like if I'm running one then I'd rather not running it and use something uh, better for me so uh, I change it yeah so that's basically uh, the deck list if you have any questions or any other cards that you're using feel free to comment down below let me know uh, share with your friends like this video if you enjoyed this deck profile subscribe for more deck profiles deck fights unboxing videos i have uh, the next set coming in and i will do unboxing for sure yeah so that's it for me today thanks for watching guys and i will see you guys in the next video signing off